Good morning, students. Hope you're all safe at this time. Uh, we have had to move all the courses online, including the labs. And so I'm trying to make videos for each lab. Uh, hopefully, it'll give you something close to a real-time experience, okay? So here is the Ballistic Pendulum Lab. You've actually uh, used this equipment before, but you've not used the pendulum part. So in the ballistic pendulum, you have a pendulum and it's quite a heavy one. That's why it's called ballistic. It's a heavy pendulum hanging there. And then behind it, you have a protractor that can measure the angle. You see this black lever? Uh, it needs to be pushed all the way to the zero mark. When the pendulum is hanging vertically, the angle is zero with the vertical. And then initially the pendulum is lifted up and a steel ball is pushed into this slot using a plunger and the steel ball is pressed against a spring so that when you pull the trigger, which you, uh, you can see it on top here using that string, when you pull the trigger, the ball is shot out at a certain velocity. And before you shoot out the ball, the pendulum is brought back to this vertical position. The lever is pushed back to zero. And then you pull the trigger. The steel ball flies into that pendulum and gets stuck in it. And together, the pendulum and the ball swing up through a certain maximum angle. And of course, it'll drop down after that but the lever will stay there showing us the maximum angle through which the pendulum swung through. Okay, so here we have that in the diagram. When you pull the trigger, the pendulum swings up and goes to this maximum position. And so the lever is now showing a certain angle. Okay, so that's all that we need to do in this lab. And we got to repeat this 10 times and take the average value of the angle. Using the average value of the angle and some other quantities, we can calculate the velocity with which the steel ball was ejected out of that gun. Now here is the data that you will be using in this lab. Uh, here are the 10 trials. These are the angles, and then the average angle is 50.9 degrees. So you get the average angle. Then the pendulum is uh, taken off from the hook. Actually, it can be removed from here using this screw. It's taken off, and the length of the pendulum is measured, the length of the pendulum. Also, the mass of the pendulum is measured. So you have the length of the pendulum and the mass of the pendulum. Another quantity that we need is the mass of the steel ball. Okay, so those are the quantities that are given here. The length of the pendulum is 0 0.3 meter, which is 30 centimeters. And that's the length to its center of gravity, not to the bottom, to the center of gravity, which will be the center of the hole into which the ball goes. And then, of course, that's the average angle. And here you have the mass of the pendulum which is 139.38 grams. Remember to change it into kilograms when you calculate. Also, you have the mass of the ball. Now, using these quantities, I'm going to show you how to calculate the velocity with which the ball came out of the gun. Cut. So now let's get to the calculations. So here you have the final position of the pendulum after it has swung through a certain angle coming up there and then initially remember it was in the vertical position when the angle was zero with the vertical so the ball is now stuck in the pendulum but before it's just an empty slot for the ball to get stuck into and here are the quantities the little m is the mass of the ball the velocity with which it's coming out is the little v there the mass of the pendulum is caps m and V subscript F is the final velocity. Now that's an important quantity, is the velocity with which 
the pendulum and the ball together begin their upward swing. Okay, that, that's an important quantity. So after the ball gets stuck in the pendulum, they together have an initial velocity with which they swing up and then you know the final velocity becomes zero. So whatever kinetic energy they both had at the bottom is transformed into potential energy at that position. So we're going to use the cons conservation of energy in this case and also the conservation of momentum, okay? So also look at the height. The height through which the pendulum swung up is h. And that can be calculated from the angle theta simply using trig in this right angle triangle. So I'm not going to go to how we get that, but basically we can calculate that. But before that, here is the conservation of momentum. All right, this is the initial momentum of the ball. Mass times velocity is momentum, you know. The initial momentum of the pendulum is zero because initially it was not moving. It was at rest. So that's the total initial momentum. And then the ball got stuck in the pendulum. So the total mass is now m plus caps m. And then their velocity, which is the same for both because they're together, is V sub F. So the that's the final momentum. Now, according to conservation of momentum, the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. So that's here. All right? Now, let's apply the conservation of energy. Like I told you, the initial kinetic energy of both of them as they swing up, which is one half times the total mass multiplied by Vf squared is equal to mgh because potential energy is mgh. You know that these two quantities will cancel out, right? We'll do that in a second, but remember I told you from the trig here, you can calculate the h using this formula. h is L minus L cosine theta. So, that's the first thing you will do from the average value of theta, knowing the length of the pendulum, which I've given you, you will first calculate the height. The height through which the center of gravity of the pendulum swung up. Once you get the height, you will put it into this formula and calculate Vf, like I'm showing you. Because you see these two cancel out and then bring the two to the other side and take the square root, you get Vf is square root 2gh. So once you get h, you can calculate this. Finally, once you get that, put it back into conservation of momentum and calculate the velocity of the ball, the initial velocity of the ball. And uh, here is the formula. All right, so that should make sense. So there are three things that you need to do. Number one, calculate the height from the angle. Number two, substitute that height and calculate Vf. Number three, put that Vf into this formula, rather, and calculate the velocity of the ball. So the aim of this experiment is to calculate the velocity with which the ball comes out using the principles of conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. So that is your lab. lab. Now, I, now think. I think uh, you should be able to turn in a lab report. So the document is already posted on Blackboard. You can look at the document, get these data into those tables and turn in a lab report on Blackboard as you normally do. Remember, there should be a cover page and all the other things, including a conclusion. And it should be a single attachment and turn it in before Saturday midnight. So this is how I hope we can do the labs going forward. I know it's not exactly the same as you doing it, but under these conditions, this is the best that we can do. So I hope you understand this. This is gonna help you on the exam definitely. Thank you and see you on the next video. Cut.